Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Finally got the combine out of the shop. I did a whole bunch of work to it, but you know what? It's time to get ready for planting season. So we got a 8295R here um, that we did an inspection on, and now we're gonna be doing a bunch of repairs to get this thing ready for spring. Whole lot of content in this one. I got some service truck updates for you guys. So let's get into it. Hey, but wait, before we get into this, Make sure you guys are smashing that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's free. It really helps me out. I'm really hoping we can hit 100,000 subscribers this year. That would be fantastic, but I can't do it without you guys. So make sure you're hitting that like button, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into it. All right, here it is. So quite a bit of work to do this thing. It's got about 3,600 hours on it and there hasn't been a whole lot done to this tractor. It's just ran and ran and ran. So it's time to do a little maintenance on it and some preventative maintenance as well. Um, we're going to be calibrating the rear PTO to fix a active code for that. Um, we're gonna replace the right hand and left hand ILS drive shafts that are all loose and wobbly um, the joints are in them are shot also where the yoke comes out of the um, mfwd here down in here you can pry that under that shaft and move the yoke up and down quite a bit on both sides so we're going to be um, tearing into the mfwd and replacing the bearings right inside of this big cover here so Front tires are gonna have to go. And once we get that done on both sides, then I'm gonna go in and we're going to re uh, replace some damaged hood wiring. Um, we're gonna repair this wiring right here. Um, got some, the connector had fell down and rubbed through a couple wires. No big deal, we'll fix that. Um, we're gonna clean the, the transmission breather. Um, there's also a, there's a load sense line leaking back behind this inner dual so i'm gonna take the the duals off to get in there and replace that line back in there um oh yeah also we're going to be um replacing the ils steering cylinder guide seals in here on both sides so we'll be doing that as well um we're gonna be going in on the front of the engine all the way down to the front main seal so we're gonna be doing, the fan drives on these are just shot. They got the old wet style drive. So we're gonna to have to put the new dry style drive and driven in. Um, we're gonna do water pump. We're gonna do the front uh, dampers and then we're gonna do the front seal. Um, we're also gonna do the rear uh, damper and we're gonna do the front uh, transmission input shaft seal while we're there. Um, what else? So, and then we're also going to be replacing the ILS accumulators and charging those. So there's four accumulators. Um, the tractor will hunt up and down just constantly as you're moving. Um, so generally that is low charge on the accumulators. Um, so we normally just take the accumulators off, get new ones, charge them back up to spec with high pressure nitrogen, throw them on, problem fixed. And then right now we are actually changing all the hydraulic oil. So we've got um, the rear end drained. Joseph's under there. Um, I just drained the, the transmission. I pulled the sump screen out of the IVT clean as a whistle. So that's a good thing. Um, we still got to drain the, the MFWD up here and then all the oil will be drained. I'm also going to go into the, um, the screen on the rear differential there where the, the pump sucks it out of the case. We'll check that sump screen as well, but quite a bit of work to do, but we are running out of time. We got to start hitting tractors really hard because it's already February, middle February, and the weather's getting nice. So we need to get on these tractors. Let's do it. It's go time. And I got a service truck update. Uh, thank you for everybody that watched that video. I appreciate everybody's comments and suggestions and everything. And everybody said, take that back seat out. And I'm like, yep, need to do that. So 
I ripped the back seat out and I made a subfloor in here. So I made that out of three quarter plywood and then I wrapped it real nice in carpet and then I made a back wall as well. And I used the seat belt mounts to mount those. And underneath here, I used two M12 bolts where the seat belts were mounted on this side to hold this piece down. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount pack out drawer here and then I'm gonna put some hooks up here where I can mount my big three quarter tech angle snap on tower crunch and the rocket light and some other torque wrenches, get them up on the wall. I'm gonna mount an inverter on the wall so I can put a battery charger in here to charge my Milwaukee batteries. I'm gonna put a pack out drawer, three drawer right here in the middle with my tap and die set and my uh, M18 vacuum. And then I can also snap my lunch box on there and then I'll have that uh, my tech bag move, moved in there, but I gained a lot of room taking that out. So thanks for suggesting that. Um, I got this carpet off of Amazon for pretty cheap. I didn't, they were almost exactly the, the cuts of the size that I needed. So that worked out pretty good. And I saved the cup holders just because. Oh, and you guys remember my racked audio ammo can bluetooth speaker how awesome that thing was you know what's more awesome than one racked speaker two racked audio speakers <laughs> So you can actually link these things together and put it into party mode and it really wakes up the sound, especially if you kind of position one here and then one maybe uh, behind you where you got sound hitting you from all different angles. It's crazy. It feels like the music's inside of your head. Um, it really wakes up the bass and the sound quality. It is just truly amazing. Um, and to, to link them, you just connect to one of them and then you push this button once and then that assigns the leader and then you just come over here and push this one twice and that assigns the follower and then you just play the music on your phone and boom both speakers work it has amazing sound quality so if you guys go to rack get rack.com that's get rack.com you can use the code zk10 and you guys can still get 10 percent off of these units this one here is one of the seasoned ammo cans where it's still got the stenciling on it. So I'm gonna put this one in the service truck. This nicer powder coated one's going to stay in the shop, but I really like the, uh, the seasoned ammo can. So I don't have to worry about scratching it or getting it dirty. Um, so that one's gonna go in the truck on the road with me, but while I'm in the shop, I'm gonna run both of them at the same time, because it is freaking awesome to run too. Um, highly recommend it. You can get these in multiple different colors. Um, Brian does an excellent job powder coating these units. Um, you can get logos and uh, decals on the back. Really, really nice. So go to getrack.com, use ZK10 for 10% off. All right, so we got the sump screen pulled out of the rear differential, and it's not too bad. Had a little bit of little gasket pieces and some pieces of sealant. There was a few little slivers of metal, but nothing uncommon with this many hours, so I think everything's fine. So we're going to get this screen cleaned up and put it back in. I'll show you guys where we yank that out of. All right, so underneath the tractor on the left side of the differential, there was a big pipe that went in between these two ports. And then you've got your, your main pump here. Anyway, so that is supplying oil to that main pump, but that screen goes in right there. Um, and there's two O-rings on that, that pipe. There's one O-ring inside of here, and then one O-ring that goes right there. So I always put new O-rings when I'm going back together with that. So. We'll get those surfaces cleaned up, new O-rings to get that back in, and uh, then we can start filling this thing full of oil. Oh, and before I get 
out from under here here's the this line right here is what's leaking at the crimp that's that load sense line i'm talking about that goes to the compensation valve right here so that's the one we're gonna have to get into because it goes way up in there and i just can't reach it so we've got the the screen and the pipe back in i'm waiting on parts to change the oil filter um, right now i got the tractor jacked up we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these front tires on this side for now plus it's going to allow me easy access to work on the front of the engine much more room for activities now all right now i'm going to be ripping out the fan drives and the fan and all this stuff so we can get into work on the front of the engine like the water pump and the uh the dampers and the front main seal so let's get into it All right, so all the fan drives and the water pump cover and the fan shrouds, everything is removed. That'll allow us access to our water pump right there. 
and our front dampers and we're going to get those off and then we will have to heat the hub and pull the hub off the crankshaft. So now we got to pull this hub off but those hubs are installed with um, Loctite like 680 so we have to heat this hub in order to release the Loctite and I've got a, a puller set up on here um, I just kind of back the crank bolt out a little bit. We're just trying to get it to initially pop and then it'll come right off. Um, so we're going to push off that crank bolt. It ain't going to hurt a thing. And I'm going to start heating that hub until it pops. goes the weasel see now it's loose so now we just take this off we'll take that crank bolt out and take that right off all right so i got the the hub and the, the seal out and we got everything all cleaned up or ready for a new seal um if you guys want to see how i get that seal out check this video right up here and uh, it goes more in depth on how to work on this area, how to get this seal in and out. So check out that video. I'm not gonna go that in depth on this one since I've already videoed it before, um, but now we're gonna press this new seal in with a special tool. Got the special tool on there. You just run it down till it bottoms out. It'll get really stiff when you bottom out. Yep, there it is. That's it. Go ahead and back that out. And Shazam, new seal is in. All right, we've got Loctite 680 on the hub, the crankshaft nose, and stick it on there and rotate a little bit to distribute the Loctite. Yep. Got a new crank bolt. We've got the threads lubricated. Thread that thing in. And then we're gonna to torque this bolt to 355 foot-pounds. All right, 355. Okay, um, don't have the dampers from parts yet, so we're gonna go ahead and work on the water pump here. Um, got a forcing plate installed on here, and now I'm gonna take out this little plug here, and then there is a pin that goes all the way up into the water pump right here. That guy. And then your water pump kit will come with a new one of these because see how screwed up they get? So we'll put a new one of those in. Then we'll have to put the, the pulling tool on here. And I'm gonna, I take an air hammer and I rattle a little bit right here on the water pump to just kind of break up the, uh, there's a bunch, of, I'll show you what I'm talking about, but there's some uh, black stuff that gets built up inside here and on those O-rings and it gets stuck in there. So I just kind of rattle it a little bit to help break that up a little bit and then they usually pull right out. Tickle it a little bit. So I got the water pump puller on there. You stick these little legs in there that goes into a little pulling plate. 
And then you attach this bridge on here. And I've actually reinforced this one because this likes to bow on you. And then we're just going to use this nut to pull on it. And we're just going to start pulling and hope our legs don't break. Come on. Not wanting to go. Oh, I heard it. Pop. See, it takes a lot of force to get that to move. I found if you rattle it, it helps. I think it's pulling my legs straight. Yep. Let's pull them out. Dang it. I bent them. Oh, that one stuck good. They started to move. Okay, so we ditched the little 90 degree puller legs and now I got self-tapping screws in the hole. We'll see what happens. Come on. Oh, I think one just gave free. I think it started to go. It finally gave it up. There she goes. Those can be a pain. Every once in a while they'll just bite you at a bitter end. Come on. Are you out now? There we go. There it is. Okay. So here's what I was talking about. See this gunk right here? That's what gets all jammed in that hole. And then it's hard to pull the water pump through it. Every water pump I've ever pulled out of a 9 liter looks just like this. So, that's that ick we were trying to fight, and so I was trying to rattle that to break some of that stuff up. But, yeah, these, you can see all those seals were tearing as they were coming out. Really hard to force those out of the hole. I wish there was a better way to do this. Um, if the puller legs straighten out and pull out, I've had luck putting these... Um, self-tapping screws in and that's what got this one out I wish they would make a tool where it was the same disc but it had a hole perfectly lined up to go into these holes where you could at least get like four uh, self-tapping screws in those holes and I think that would work a lot better so maybe I'll make one of those discs one of these days but this Welding this piece on the back side of there keeps this um, bracket from bowing out. So that does help there. All right, got the hole all cleaned up. Got my new water pump here and my little pusher with those little legs that go into the holes. And we're gonna use the, the bridge and a pusher bolt. And we're gonna push this thing into place and then we'll put our pin back in and torque our little plug.
torque plug, 133 inch pounds. All right, so the new dampers don't come painted, so I've got a coat of paint on those drying. While that's drying, we're gonna come over here. Um, Joseph already got the, the rear damper and flywheel out of the back here. So we're gonna pull this hub out, yank the input seal out right there and replace that. Now we can slide the hub out. Gotta pull the flywheel or it doesn't clear. It just barely clears it. All right. So now you can pull, set that down. Now you can pull that little lip seal off. There's a little rubber dirt seal. Yep, and now that leaves just the oil seal. And we'll get that pried out of there and a new one pressed in. And look at the rear main, look how dry it is. I mean, it is bone dry. Now, you do not want to disturb one of those if you don't have to. If it's dry, leave it alone. But this input shaft seal is prone to leak, so while we got all this out of here, it's a good idea to replace that seal real quick and put a new O-ring on the, the input hub. So we're going to tear into that seal. All right, we got the old seal out, got a new one pressed in there, and that's how you do it. You put the seal driver on, and then you put a block of wood against the crankshaft, and then you use an indexing bar, and you pry it into place. All right, go ahead and let down. Like that. And you put blue Loctite on the outer diameter of the seal. And that looks good, it's good and flush. Okay, we're back to the front of the engine because we are waiting on crankshaft bolts to come in from parts. Um, well, the flywheel bolts that go into the crankshaft are one-time use, so waiting on those, we're gonna go shift our focus back to the front here. Now that we got the water pump replaced, I'm gonna go in and replace the thermostat in this housing right here, but the air intake pipe has to come off in order to get that out, so I've got everything unattached. I just need to yank that off and then I can start going into the thermostat. There we go. Apparently I need a bigger weapon. Jeez. There. And there's the thermostat. So I took this pipe out and cleaned it up and replaced the O-rings on it. Got a new thermostat in here. So now we got to get it back in this hole first. Just plop right down. Turn this way down. Alright, I'll torque all that down. Alright, we're gonna get our dampers on. Got them painted and uh we'll get all those torqued to spec and then we can put our water pump cover on. Yeah. All right, dampers are in and torque. Time for the water pump housing. Okay, got a lot done. Got the fan shroud and the, you know, the charge air pipe in. Uh, all the radiator hoses are new. Got the new fan shroud in um, the old one was actually broken on the other side so we got a new one in there got the coolant tank set into place we are ready to install fan drives and fill this thing up with coolant it's time to put some big fan drives in Oh, 
Oh, it's in there. One. I put a dowel in there to help me hold that sucker. I asked about putting a dowel in last time. I was swiftly told no. <laughs> I asked Pat and I was like, do you think there's any way a dowel could go in there? He's like, nope, nope, no chance. He's like, set the man in. But I was like, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no chance. <laughs> You down this one. It's kind of needed. Big fan drive. Snug these up. Put on there. Swivel. Oh Lord Almighty. What's up, Patty? Uh, they leave. Huh? They leave. Where are you leave? Mm -hmm. My phone's just getting started. I just got fan drives in. Isn't that exciting? Drive and driven. Driven and drive. Fancy ones too. You doing a time lapse here? Or? No, it's just live. No. It's fine. It adds character. And boom, the fan drive is all done. That's as far as I can go. I'm gonna leave this shield out for now so I can get to those ILS accumulators later. Um, so we're still waiting on some uh, flywheel bolts. So I guess the next thing I can do is go ahead and tear into this. Um, so we're gonna be taking this whole hub and spindle off drive shaft ILS cylinder so we can fix this. See the yoke moving up and see the yoke moving up and down in that? Yeah. It's 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 worse on the other side. So anyway, so we'll be Got to get this upper control arm up and the lower control arm down so we can get this this cover off right here so we can get into that bearing and replace that bearing but also going to have to i'm going to drain this hub down um, so we can change oil in that and we can take that drive shaft out i gotta take this center plug out to get the bolt out for the drive shaft so the first thing i'm going to do is get this drained and get that ILS drive shaft out of there. But I think we're gonna wrap up this video and I'm gonna make all the ILS and MFWD stuff um, for the next video. So I guess we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video, ZK Master Tech. Um, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and comment below. Let me know how I'm doing. And also stay tuned because there's going to be more content coming on this tractor. Um, we're going to be tearing into the ILS and the MFWD and you guys don't want to miss it. Make sure you turn your notifications on because this video is coming soon. So until next time, keep that green iron moving.